Welcome everybody, my name is Jorge and I am Mateo and we will present you today the Vidal Theorem and the Axiom of Choice. All we can see does have a size. For example, this whiteboard, 1.5 meters long, or this pencil is 12 centimeters, or the distance between A and B has a size 2. The sets also have a size. For example, the sets of the natural numbers have the size 0. They are the best measurable. But what if I say that there exist such sets that do not have a size? Sounds crazy? Not too much. The Vitali theorem states that there exist such sets that cannot be the best measurable. But how can be that possible? Let's show you how to create a sizeless set, also called a Vitali set, named after Giuseppe Vitali. But before we start with the actual topic, the Vitali theorem, we would like to present you the axiom of choice. The axiom of choice states that for any set of infinite non-empty sets, we can create a new set that contains one element of each set. So now that you have seen the complicated formula, we would like to present you an easier example of the axiom of choice. Let's assume that we are right now at the supermarket and we are at the fruit department and we would like to pick from each shelf a different fruit. Well, this is a very easy task. We could just pick our shopping cart and go through each shelf and pick up a fruit. Now, let's assume that there are an infinite amount of non-empty shelves. This makes the task basically impossible because it's impossible to go infinite amount of times and pick up a fruit. The axiom of choice in this case comes in and tells us that there is an existing choice function that is going to go through each shelf and pick up randomly a fruit. We will start by analyzing the interval between 0 and 1. As we already know from the equivalence test concept, we can basically pick from the interval different numbers and put them into different boxes. Each box represents an equivalence class. If, for example, we have two real numbers, say x and y, if x minus y is rational, we have now an equivalence relation between x and y. This equivalence relation generates a new partition, a partition of the real numbers. If we subtract two irrational numbers, we don't get a rational number, but rather an irrational number. In this case, a new partition is generated, and those elements are now put in box B. Now, as you have seen, we can do this infinitely many times and build up infinitely many boxes. So now, in order to create a Vitali set, we will use the axiom of choice, which basically picks up from each box a random element. This new set, called V, has, for example, now uh, 1 over 6, pi over 8, and so on. And so we have created a new set V, which is non-measurable. But it's still not clear why is it not measurable. Oh, you're right. Here comes the proof. To prove this, we demonstrate that it is not possible that the Vitali set may have a size. Namely, we assume that this set is the best measurable, and then we derive a contradiction. First, we take all the rational numbers between minus 1 and 1. As they are countable, we can easily make a list letting QK be an index enumeration of the rational numbers. For our demonstration, we have to take the translated sets, which are just shifted copies of the Vitali set, but added the rational numbers. I make it a little bit more understandable. Here we have our Vitali set, which contains the elements B1, B2, B3, and so on. As we saw in the example before, it was 1 6, P over 8, and so on. To create our set B1, we take all the elements of the Vitali set, but then we add the first term of the rational number, so b1 plus q1, b2 plus q1, b3 plus q1, and so on. For the second set, b2, we just do the same, but this time we use the second term, q2, so b1 plus q2, and so on. And so we do the same with the rest terms of the rational numbers. 
If we illustrate it, we can see here some points of the Vitali set. Note that these elements just move rightwards or leftwards, but they keep the same size. That's why we call them translated sets, because of the property of the translation invariance, which states that it does not matter the position, the size will be the same. So we can say that the translated sets are just shifted copies of the Vitali set, but added to rational numbers. Note also that these points are pairwise disjoint and they stay always between minus 1 and 2. To continue with our proof, we would like to make sure that these properties are clear. In the set theory, when we speak about additivity, we say that we sum two or more segments that don't have any points in common. It means they are disjoint. We formally write it as follows. If we have a union of countable many disjoint events, their sizes add itself. It is known as the sigma additivity. If we have here a segment of size 2 and we just slide it over the line, no matter the position, it will keep the same size. This is called translation invariance. With the help of the sigma additivity, we can sum the translated sets because they are disjoint. As the translation invariant states, the shifting movement doesn't change the size, so the translated sets have the same size as the Vitali set. Combining these two formulas, we derive that the union of the translated sets is just the sum of the Vitali set infinite many times. As we saw before, the union of the translated sets were within the interval minus 1 and 2, so it has to be smaller. But at the same time, the Vitali set was taken from the real numbers between 0 and 1, so it has to be bigger. Applying the Lebesgue measure and these properties, we derive that the length function of the Vitali set has to be between 1 and 3. But we have a problem here. Can you see it? Let's suppose that the size of the Vitali set is 0. So we add 0 plus 0 plus 0 infinite many times, and we get the result 0. But 0 is not between 1 and 3, so we have here a contradiction. There is only one chance, it has to be a positive value. Let's suppose 0 0.1, we added 0 0.1 infinite many times, and we get as result infinite. And the same if we choose 0 0.0001, it doesn't matter, we will get infinity. Infinity is not between 1 and 3. So we have another contradiction. So what can we do? There is only one answer. The Vitali set does not have a size. It's impossible to describe explicitly a Vitali set. That's why the axiom of choice is essential to explain how it is created. Because there is no other way to come to the result that there are sizeless sets. The problem of this axiom is that one element is chosen randomly, so we do not know how our collection of elements will look like. That's why some mathematicians are against this axiom. But after all, although this axiom may be counterintuitive, the Vitali theorem depends entirely on this axiom to be true and plausible. So this is the end of our video, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and if you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up. Yes, see you next time, thanks for watching.